Warning. Serious injury can result from experimentation with HHO or Brown's gas. Children should not attempt anything shown on this channel without close adult supervision. Even some big kids. Please, play it safe. Let's go over what we got here. Um, I have my pulse width modulator. It is set up right now for 25 amps, and I don't want this cell drawing nearly that much. All right, I want this cell drawing a maximum of 20 amps. So when I first turn on the power supply, uh, this pulse width modulator is not going to be doing anything. It's going to be solid on like an on switch, and it won't be uh, into current limiting at all when, I, when I'm mixing up my electrolyte. A lot of people have asked me, and they keep asking me, over and over and over, and I want them to stop, but anyway, um, they ask me, how strong is your electrolyte? And my answer is always the same, as strong as it needs to be, that's it. Start weak, work your way up. So I'm going to show you how I do that. Right here is a little scale I picked up at Harbor Freight. I'm lucky enough to have one only about uh, 30 minutes from my house, and I drive by it all the time. Only about $13 for this scale. It uh, has a, um, a maximum weight of, I think, 5,000 grams or something like that, almost two pounds. And uh, I actually use it for, for shipping out the pulse width modulators and small shipping, plus uh, it's, it has a uh, resolution of one-tenth of a gram. First things first, I'm going to mix up some electrolyte. Guess what I'm putting on? Latex gloves. And you'll notice I've taken my scale and set it inside of a little catch basin, just in case any of the crystals fall off uh, as, I'm, as I'm adding them to the water. I have a one liter bottle, and I'm going to start with a very weak mixture of uh, about 10 grams of potassium hydroxide to one liter of water. For this cell, that should be, considering the, uh, the large plate spacing that I have on this cell, which is 5 16 of an inch, and that the surface area is only a few inches, unlike, uh, unlike say, an 8-inch EBN cell, it should actually be a fairly weak soup for that. And then when I'm, when I'm ready to... Um, increase the concentration. All I need to do is just take the, the uh, clean-out cap, or the filler cap, off, take the whole cell, dump it over, dump the uh, electrolyte out, mix a little bit more in, dump the electrolyte back in, test it again, and that is how I'm going to arrive at my correct electrolyte concentration for this cell and this design. Every cell is different, uh, no two cells are alike. I always tell people start really weak and then work your way up and you never know until you've actually built the cell. To measure out 10 grams, I've got my one liter bottle. I'm going to pour some distilled water into my one liter bottle. All right. And uh, should I mix it up in there? No, I don't want to mix it up in there. Here's my uh, trusty Walmart flip top lid jar that I'm going to use as a, a mixing container. I'll just put my one liter in there, and I'm going to start the water stirring as I mix the potassium hydroxide crystals into it so that they don't have time to settle to one spot at the bottom of the uh, mixing bowl. The reason for that is because when the crystals settle at the bottom, they become very, very hot as they start going into solution. And if you're not careful, you'll actually melt the bottom of a plastic container. You may even want to mix this in a, in a glass container, but since I don't feel like running into the house right now for a large glass container, 
Uh, we're just going to do it this way. All right. Now, when I take and put this cap, which is the cap for my one liter bottle, and set it in the tray, before I turn it on, what will happen is the scale is going to zero calibrate for the weight that is present on the on the top of the platform right now and then any additional weight I add to it will will show up as something greater than zero on the display so I'm just going to turn the unit on display lights up and now it says zero ounces so I'm ready to add some potassium hydroxide You know, very slowly now. And incidentally, as soon as you bring this out into the open air, it will begin to liquefy on whatever you have it set on. So be it uh, if it falls on your tabletop, if it sits in your spoon too long, or touches your skin, it will begin to liquefy. And as soon as it begins to liquefy, it begins to burn it. All right. Uh, actually, I wanted grams. Okay, that's 1.5 grams, 3.8, that's 5.1 grams, I'll give you an idea what 5.1 grams of potassium hydroxide looks like in a cap. Okay, this is the cap, wide mouth cap to a one liter bottle. So, I'm going to mix this 5 grams into my water and I'm going to begin stirring it right away get those crystals moving around so that they don't settle in one spot and already they're just about completely dissolved because I have a very weak solution here so I go back and now I need uh, 4.9 more grams to make 10 grams of potassium hydroxide to my one liter of water, one liter of distilled water, I might add. And some of my crystals are beginning to fall out into the tray beside the cap. Get those moving around. And instead of spinning it all in one direction that would cause the crystals to gather at the center, I, I uh, try to mix it up, stir it up. All right, now hopefully those will fall off. They did. Huh, must be fairly dry out tonight. That's good. Okay, so I'm done with that for now. Set that aside. So this is it. I'm pretty excited, guys. I don't know about you. I mean, to a lot of people, they're gonna, they'd look at this and say, uh, yeah, what's he doing? I don't know. Let's go to the next channel. This is cool stuff, buddies. The inaugural filling.